I've come to realize that there are many conflicting messages surrounding eating disorders. Many Canadians, like me, unaware, confused about the condition. I wanted to get some real, honest answers. I mean, you must get a lot of calls from young girls considering like they're probably really the only ones that have eating disorders. Well, no, that's a really huge myth that's still being perpetuated by society. Um, it's not just girls who have eating disorders, it can be males as well. Eating disorders can affect anyone from all walks of life, so we definitely don't just receive calls from girls. People can go on the internet anytime and access all this information. What's the point in having a hotline in the first place? Having someone who can help you navigate all the different options that are available uh, is a really valuable thing. And also having someone who can listen to you and who can validate you and knowing that there's someone out there who is listening is really big for a lot of people and that's something that the Helpline offers. We look at magazines and, and print publications of any kind and these, these beautiful, thin, model-esque people are, are, it's widely known they're, they're Photoshop. It's not very real, um, yet people strive to want to look like that. It, it has to be vanity and a lifestyle choice for these, these people to have eating disorders. So eating disorders are not a choice, which is a huge misconception. They're a mental illness just like depression is, just like anxiety, and they're meant to be taken seriously. And I think there's a lot of stigma about eating disorders because people think they are a choice. And a lot of times people think the solution to it is simple, like just eat and everything will be better. Yeah. But it's absolutely not like that. Like anything, it's hard for people to even recognize that they might have an eating disorder. They might be in denial about it. Eating disorders are really serious mental illnesses right. and anorexia, for example, has one of the highest mortality rates of any mental illness. So speaking of body-based bullying, mm -hmm. does it really play a significant role in eating disorders at all? Yes, definitely. Um, How? Because the number one reason why kids are being bullied at school is because of the way that they look. There's this fear of fatness and this weight bias that develops at such an early age that kids might be prone to developing eating disorders because they're being influenced by bullies. People with eating disorders seem very secretive. Mm -hmm. They don't want to tell anybody. So yeah. if they don't confide in you, they don't trust you, they're not going to tell you, what are the signs? Like, how do you know if, if, if there's an issue? Yeah, well, I mean, there are so many other warning signs and red flags that people can look out for. Uh, you know, if, if they have a loved one that they're around all the time, they may notice that they're chronically dieting, counting calories, um, maybe using laxatives and diuretics. So uh, there are other warning signs that one can look out for, and, and that's why we have our helpline, because if you notice those red flags, you notice those, those warning signs, you can reach out to us. What advice would you give to someone either with an eating disorder or someone who knows someone with one, what would you say to them? I think to not be afraid to talk about it. That there are resources like Netic out there for you. To someone who knows someone who has an eating disorder, I would just remind them to be supportive, non-judgmental and loving and really make sure that that person understands they can come and talk to you if they're going through something because there is a lot of shame around this and knowing that they can open up and be in a comfortable, safe, accepting space will give people the courage to come and talk to you. Thank you so much.